And yeah. uh, that's how you develop an appreciation for the good things and a dislike for the bad things. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's no country, there's no country, there's no place on this planet you can go where you won't find a form of racism or sexism or anything like that. I mean, it's good. That's just mankind. You know, the best thing you can do is I always said this, treat people the way you want to be treated and treat those who treat you right. You treat them right. You know, the people, it doesn't matter what they're, their religion is, their race yeah. or anything like that. If they're an asshole, they're an asshole. And you got to get down, you get down with them. But the ones that are that are backing you, that support you, you always support them and you always come to come to aid for your buddy, you know, back them up if you need to. They need 20 bucks I'm and you have remember it, in college, I went to a, when I was in college at Long Beach State, a bunch of the black dudes on the football team took me to a session one night. And I thought the session was going to be music. They get there, man, it's just an all-black party, dude, and I'm the only white boy there. Yeah. So that night, I knew what it was like to be the only white dude. Right. But years later, uh, I got really debilitated from the cancer and the chemotherapy. I had to enroll in a handicapped swimming class at Saddleback College. And so when I showed up for it, all the people around there, man, they're obviously handicapped. You know, there's dudes in wheelchairs and uh, guys with braces all over them and people that look like, you know, they got some mental problems and, and man, they're all looking at me like, like I'm the only white dude at the all black party. You right. know, it was like really weird. They're looking at me like, what's he doing here, man? Yeah. He looks normal. What, what, what's he doing in this class? And then when they saw me get in the pool and the guy told me I had to hold my arms up above my head and walk and put my heel directly in front of my other toe. And I kept falling over about every second step. They all looked at each other and went, yeah, he belongs here. He's one of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, they thought, like, who's this asshole, man? Yeah. What's he doing here? Right. You know, it, it's funny to encounter uh, that, that sort of discrimination on any level. You know, I'm sure black people and, and greasers – uh, people who don't fit the the mold that everybody thinks they need to to be fit into, they, they've all seen that look of disgust <laughs> yeah. in people's faces. Uh, hopefully, and it probably won't happen before I die, Ronnie Nolan, but it would be neat to be able to walk down the street one day and, and nobody trip on anybody. I agree. Because of what they got. Or what they, you know, like we're all just people, dude. That's where it's probably better... Back in the beginning, where everybody just walked around naked in the jungle. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, well, I see what you got. You see what I got. Okay, we're equal. It's cool, you know. Yeah. There's no difference, you know. But then after that, it all changed. Yeah. So it did. They blame it on Adam and Eve for the apple and all that. But I don't know. I blame myself for any of my bullshit. <laughs> well, you know, that's all we can do is we have to take responsibility for the things we've done and things we've said and how we've lived our lives. So, yeah, definitely. I hope I hope I gave uh, your buddies, your listeners out there a little to go on on greasers. I don't think I probably didn't tell me anything they don't already know, but uh, I enjoyed doing it, man. Thanks. Yeah, definitely. I enjoyed having you on here. And the, the whole point was for it. <clears throat> now, I'm sure a lot of these cats know about, you know, all that kind of stuff, but it's kind of cool to have an original era guy that was actually there that saw it talk about his experiences in what it was like. Because, I mean, you put a lot of emotion into it, and I could no I noticed that you were just, it was like you were back, you were like reliving the memories, you're thinking about it. It's almost like you could smell the air, you could see the, you know, the motorcycles, you could hear the sounds, you know, and what it was like, and you know, how you felt about it at the time. And that's something that I learned about in your class is about, you know, firsthand, secondhand experiences and all that kind of stuff. So, you, so some of your teachings really did rub off, but more of your teachings about life are what rubbed off on me and the stories you told and interpreting them later on and going, yeah, oh. I ended up doing that or I, I came across something like that. I know, yeah, I understand now, you know? Well, that's good. I remember I was beating the shit out of my brother one day and the guys on my dad's football team, we didn't realize till later that they were playing us against each other where, you know, a group of players would come up to my brother and they'd say, 
Hey, we were talking to Chris, and he said he's beating you up every time you ever got in a fight. Right. And then they would come up to me and say, hey, Chris, Kevin said he beats you up every time you guys get in a fight. Right. And so pretty soon we'd end up in a fight, right? Mm -hmm. We'd heard all this shit, and it was for their benefit that we were like their cheap entertainment. Right. And my brother would never give up. He would never give up. And I was uh, sitting on him. I had him in a schoolboy pin old with my knees on his shoulders and blasting him in the face. And he just said, man, that's all you got, dude. That's all you can do. <laughs> and he wouldn't quit. And I'll never forget, man, after three and a half hours of beating on my brother, this greaser dude shows up. And he's smoking a cigarette and he's got the black leather jacket and he's got his hair all slicked back. And he gets down right on the ground, dude, right next to my brother's ear. And he says, hey, man, I've been there plenty of times before. And there really ain't nothing going to be gained by you laying here and letting him continue to beat the shit out of you, man. Yeah. So I know you hate to do it. I know it goes against your, 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 your code, dude. I know it goes against your heart and your soul. But just tell him you had enough. And then he's going to let you up and you can go heal up in a couple of weeks or a couple of months or whatever. And then the next time you encounter this guy, you can beat the fuck out of him, dude. Right. But today it just ain't going to happen. Right. And I remember he blew the smoke out and my brother kind of looked at him and it made sense. And my brother said, okay, dude, I quit. <laughs> and I got up and I remember the greaser put his arm around my brother and kind of dusted him off and said, Hey man, I know you hate to do that shit, dude, but hey, I've been watching this shit for three hours and it ain't going to get better for you, dude. <laughs> you know, just cut your loss, call it a day, go get a Coke or something, dude. Yeah. And, and uh, you, you know, you want a cigarette? And my brother goes, no, I don't smoke, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll never forget that, dude. He says, man, it ain't going to happen today, dude. <laughs> yeah. He didn't say, dude. He probably said, man. It ain't going to happen today, man. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm glad I grew up when I did, Ronnie, because I, I did get to see that and be a part of it. And when I see the outsiders, I can say, oh, man, that, that Letterman's jacket, that's from Will Rogers, dude. It's a blue and gold jacket with the T. <coughs> if it was blue and white, that would be Webster. Right. If it was... Uh, let me see, a light blue and burgundy, it would be Memorial. If it's green and white, it would be Edison. But all the Tulsa Letterman's jackets had the T on them. And then you wore your school color jacket right. with the T on it. And then all your, you know, all your medals and stuff were on there. I had a pitching jacket, dude. I had patches on both sleeves and medals everywhere. Mm -hmm. It was for tennis, dude. It wasn't football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the team in football, but. I was on the team, dude. I made the team. I was like third string quarterback, and I held uh, on the extra points. I was the holder, and I did this on the kickoff, and that was it, dude. Yeah. But that's about it, dude, unless you got any more you want to bring up. Nope, that's uh, that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the, uh, the recording here, and uh, I appreciate your time. I know these cats are going to dig it because I know a lot of them are big fans of the Outsiders and that whole era and that area where it happened. So, hey, what's up, cats and kittens? Well, I hope you enjoyed the interview with uh, Chris Boyle. Thank you again, Mr. Boyle. want to say I really appreciate the teachings, appreciate the interview, and uh, thanks for dealing with a punk kid like myself and watching me grow over the years and doing this interview with me. It really, it means a lot. I know it means a lot to, uh, to my subscribers as well. So there you guys have it. That is the real outsiders and how it really went down from a cat who was there that grew up and saw it all happen. Also want to make a quick announcement and a big fucking thank you to all of you guys out there, cats and kittens for helping me reach a thousand subscribers i know it's not a lot by youtube standards but it fucking sure means a hell of a lot to me so thank each and every fucking one of you <clears throat> i will uh, be doing a video later in the week letting you guys know where and when the live stream is going to be 
and uh, we'll kick this shit off and have a good old rockin' time. So until then, hang loose, be safe. If you don't know, get a clue, get a brew, and get a rock and roll tattoo. Madman is out.